Okay, in this equation you see solve and check. And this is your radical equation. The checking is so, so, so very important. Make sure you check. Even in your multiple choice format of your test, your quiz, your final, you might want to check first, in fact. Don't forget to check. It is the most important part. Okay, so you see your steps on the left. What you want to do is isolate the radical, get it by itself. So in this particular problem, the radical is already by itself. Great. The next thing you want to do once you isolate the radical and get the radical on the side by itself is you want to square both sides. When you square the radical, the radical goes away. So that would just leave you with an x minus 3. The square root and the square cancel one another out. On this side over here, you're going to have an x minus 5 squared. That means write it twice and foil it. So if I just squeeze this little step in there, you get x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. So you'll foil it out. So you would get x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals x minus 3. Okay, now you don't have a radical anymore, and that's great news. So your next step says solve by factoring. Well, those are the same factoring rules that you've learned in earlier this section and last section. You want to get everything to one side. So I'm going to choose to move this x over to the x squared side and move this x over. So when I move this x over, that changes its sign and moves it over, and I add 3 to both sides to get rid of it. So what that's going to give me is an x squared minus 11x plus 28, and that equals 0. So when I move the x over, it changes signs. When I move the 3 over, it changes signs. And that gives you something easy to factor. Okay, the factors of 28 that add to give me 11 are 7 and 4. They're going to be the same sign, both negative. I'll set both of those pieces equal to 0. And I'll solve them out. So x would equal 7 when I move that over. And x would equal 4 when I move that over. And those are not my answers. Now, you'd be very, uh, very tempted to put that as your answer, and it will be one of your multiple choice uh, possibilities, but you don't want to pick it because you haven't checked. So what you'll have to do here is go back up and check, and you want to check in the original. So I'm going to come to the side on this far side over here and check. So I'm going to take 7 and plug it into the equation. When I plug in 7, I get 7 minus 5 equals the square root of 7 minus 3. Okay, 7 minus 5 is 2. This would be the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so this is a true statement. That means that 7 works. When I plugged in 7, I got a true value. That means it works. Now that 2 equals 2, that just tells you that it's true. That doesn't tell you anything about the answer. That's not going to be part of your answer. Okay, so let's check the other one. Let's check 4. Remember my equation is x minus 5 equals the square root of x minus 3. Okay, so that would be 4. I'm checking 4. 4 minus 5 equals the square root of 4 minus 3. So 4 minus 5 is a negative 1, and the square root of 1 would be 1. So what I get here is a false statement. Negative 1 does not equal 1. So that means x equals 4 is bad. So x equals 7 works, and it's your only answer.
do not put both answers. Okay, so let's try one more of these. We'll go through it a little faster. Okay, so your directions are to solve and check. Your first step is to get the radical by itself. That is done. Your second step is to square both sides. When you square a radical, the radical goes away. On this other side, that means you're going to write x plus 6 twice and FOIL it out. So cleaning this up, I get that 2x plus 15 equals x squared plus 12x plus 36. Okay, and now I don't have a radical. The x squared is easy to factor if it's positive, so that means I'm going to push this 2x over and push this 15 over. So when I move the 15, I'm sorry, when I move the 2x over, it changes signs, and when I move the 15 over, it changes signs. So that gives me x squared plus 10x plus 21. When I get ready to factor that one, the factors of 21 that add to give me 10 are 7 and 3. They're the same sign, both positive. I'll set both of those factors equal to 0. And I'll solve them out. When I move the 7 over, I would get that x equals negative 7. When I move the 3 over, I get that x equals negative 3. And again, these are not the answer. The reason they're not the answer is that you have to check it. So let's check the negative 7. When you plug in negative 7, you get 2 times negative 7 plus 15 inside the radical equals negative 7 plus 6. So inside the radical, you would have the square root of 1. And on this right side, you would get negative 1. Well, 1 does not equal negative 1, so this is a false statement. And that means that negative 7 is bad. It does not work. So let's check the other one. Now, when I check, I always want to check in the original. You don't want to check in the squared part or the full part or the factor part. Always check in the original. So we're going to plug in negative 3. That would give me the square root of 9 on this side, which is 3. On the right side, negative 3 plus 6 would give me 3. And that's a true statement. Now, 3 is not my answer. 3 just tells me it's true. So your answer is this value over here, x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3 is the only answer. Make sure on your quiz and your exams that you check.